Alright, so before I get started, I want to establish that this video is not only about my opinion, but also explaining my perspective on it. I'm not here to tell you why Kingdom Hearts 3 is objectively disappointing or anything. Not only are your reasons most likely different from mine, but also a lot of people don't even share that overall opinion. Anyway, even after many long videos and posts explaining why the game doesn't have any filler or anything like that, the feeling never really left me. I also want to establish too that this isn't a Kingdom Hearts 3 hate video or anything. Overall, I do actually like the game but there's certain things that I still haven't let go about it. Hopefully after I put all my thoughts into words, I can. Anyway, this isn't exactly a new topic, but I wanted to talk about this because I've never really shared my perspective on it on the channel. But I also want to put these thoughts out there before Kingdom Hearts 4 comes out for reasons that I'll explain later. So to start off, I'd like to say that my expectations for KH3 were definitely a huge part of why I was disappointed at points. I've been watching its development since it was announced back in 2013, and I was a lot younger back then too. Definitely not going to suggest that my ideas from years ago would have been better since they aren't even really fully written stories or fully written thoughts, but there were some expectations I had that weren't met with this release. Thinking about what I expected for the game, well, there's a lot of things. The first issue I had was how long it took to save the whole cast of the game. This game is basically the payoff to Sora saving everyone that's been affected by Xehanort throughout the series. They've been hyping it up since Birth by Sleep's blank points, as well as KH Coded's ending. So it was never really a matter of if they'll be saved, but just when. Also, they're all on the box art, so like, of course they're coming back. I wasn't able to get the game at launch, but even when I saw pictures of Aqua being back in a normal form after being shown as anti Aqua in the trailers, I didn't really feel like I saw a big spoiler. Because, yeah, I knew everyone's going to be coming back, and I knew they were all going to gather in the Keyblade Graveyard to fight. In KH3, you don't successfully save Aqua and Ven until you finish your last Disney World and you don't save Terra, Shion, and Roxas till you're further into Keyblade Graveyard. I personally at least thought the whole game was going to be centering around getting those guys back. I thought that we were going to slowly but surely be making progress to build the Guardians of Light. On my first playthrough, it really felt like the game only started in the last couple hours, because that's really what I was there for. Now, that's not to say that I didn't expect Disney Worlds. I knew they'd be there, of course. I saw Roy Connolly tell us about how Tangled was coming or when they showed the art of Sora fighting Dark Baymax. I was excited for them, but uh, some of them didn't really meet the expectations of how they worked in the past games. I'll explain what I mean by this though. I've said it before on the channel, but I'm not really a big Disney guy. I didn't really grow up with it, so I haven't seen most of the movies shown off in the KH series. I'll definitely watch them at some point, but it's never really been a problem for me before this game. I still enjoy going to all these different worlds and meeting all these characters that I only ever heard of or seen pictures of. But something was off in KH3. This was really the first KH game where I felt like I needed to watch the movie to understand what was happening. This wasn't for every world, but some of them had these moments. I was following along with what was happening in Rapunzel's world until Sora got put to sleep, Finn was knocked out in a boat, and then when we wake up, suddenly he's Eugene now. I felt like I missed out on a lot of important stuff off screen. And it wasn't even a situation where Sora and the gang left and came back for a revisit. They literally just put Sora to sleep just so we could skip to what I assume is the ending of the movie. There's also the Caribbean in which there's moments like uh, Barbosa just kind of chilling out with the crew now. Weren't we jumping this dude in the last game? Sora's confused and so am I. Lastly, for Arendelle, I did actually watch this movie Frozen, so I knew what was going on, but... I'd definitely be confused if I hadn't. Because I watched the movie, I knew that Hans was someone that was pretending to be Anna's true love and all that, and he eventually ends up being a twist villain. However, in this game, he's literally just some guy that only shows up at the end when he tries to kill Elsa. All you know about him is that he's apparently supposed to be Anna's true love, and, and that's all I really say, honestly. He gets knocked out and then spawns a Heartless. And I think it's kind of wild how a Disney villain for this world got less than a minute of screen time and no dialogue whatsoever. Anyway, while I did enjoy some of the worlds, especially Olympus, which honestly did meet my expectations for them, if not surpass them, some of them did leave me scratching my head, but I kind of just went with the flow. Alright, so I wasn't the biggest fan of what's in between Olympus and the Cupid Graveyard, even though they built up themes of getting strength from the desire to protect those you love. Well, okay, I mean, what else was Namora supposed to build up but things like that, right? Well, that's where another expectation I had comes in. I think this started when I first saw the Kingdom Hearts 3 opening. So the first opening reveal didn't have the full thing, but the beginning left a big impression on me. The shot still sticks with me to this day, and it's when a very young Xehanort is sitting alone and he looks up at the night sky. Something in that sky seemingly opened his eyes to something, and he immediately begins setting the pieces down that leads to all our favorite characters being pawns on his board. At the time, this really made me wonder what made him start all of this. What was it that opened his eyes to his current ideology and goal of recreating the Keyblade War? and seeing what the light of Kingdom Hearts would bring. What made him even go as far as killing his best friend? And we do see in early cutscenes that he was generally friends with Ericus at one point. And then once I saw the full opening, Sora's opening lines as well as him staring at the sky, 
It also caught my eye, as well as the end when Xehanort gazes at Sora's piece, which is glowing in the sun's light, and on the flip side, Sora holds Xehanort's piece and he stands under the light of the heart-shaped moon, Kingdom Hearts. I mean, what does this even mean? I mean, sure, Xehanort was gonna summon Kingdom Hearts, yeah, but what happens after? I mean, what were they even implying? Well, first of all, Xehanort doesn't even show up in the game until you reach the Keyblade Graveyard, so oh well. This game didn't really go as much into Xehanort's past as I would have wanted. They have information about him in past secret reports, but this opening really made me think they had something even more meaningful to show. The way they did use chess in the game was cool, yeah, but it just wasn't as much as I hoped for. Secondly, I was hoping for more interactions between Sora and Master Xehanort, since the opening really seems to revolve around those two specifically. So when you stop to think about it, the game does in fact show that these two are inverses of each other. One will sacrifice everyone to save himself, and the other will sacrifice himself to save everyone. So I can't fully say that the game doesn't do that at all. It even has a scene that everyone likes where Sora does get to finally confront Xehanort's ideals to his face, but you know, it just, it wasn't as much as I was hoping for. There's also one last big expectation I had for the game, and honestly, this one I set myself up on. So when the final Cage 3 trailer came out, I heard from some friends that it seemed like it had some pretty big stuff in it, things like character deaths potentially, so I skipped that trailer. Well, uh, most of it that is. I mean, it was Cage 3, I couldn't just fully ignore a trailer. So I skipped to the very end of the trailer because something had caught my eye from the general buzz of it. Couldn't really hear the audio because I'm pretty sure I was still in school when I watched that last part, but I saw a world I was unfamiliar with at the end. Some unknown world with unknown armored beings floating up. Was Xehanort looking like things are going well for him while Sora, well, not so much. Was this that Cable Town thing that I was hearing about earlier on in this development? I also think I might have heard that this was a world that Namora wanted to show for a long time, but I I mean, I honestly thought, and hey, don't blast me for this, but I legit thought, at the time at least, that this was the inside of Kingdom Hearts. I went back to watch the final trailer while I was thinking up of this vid, and yeah, this, this was really completely my own fault because I watched it without audio. I mean, he even said the name of the world in the trailer and everything, so uh, yeah. And we see it at the beginning of the game too. It's where Xehanort and Ericus are playing their chess game, so... I mean, that was debunked pretty quickly when I actually, like, started playing the game. But when I first saw that, man, I was thinking, like, this was gonna be insane. I figured this would change everything we knew about the overall world of the Kingdom Hearts series. Either that, or this was some new world that Xehanort created after he got Kingdom Hearts' power. So yeah, had a lot of expectations that weren't met. Could all of them have been met in a 25-hour game that has to include Disney World? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not, actually. The more might have thought the same thing, because now I actually am getting what I wanted so long ago. I wanted a Xehanort backstory, and we got that in Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. I reacted and reviewed the whole story, and it was great, honestly. Even its use of Disney was the best in a while. Not only that, but there may be even more to see in Missing Link. I expected the black box to be revealed at the end of KH3. That didn't happen, but what did get revealed was not only Zigbar actually being Lushu, but also the foretellers now appearing in modern KH time. And that was honestly a pretty wild reveal. Also, Sora disappeared at the end, waking up in this strange new city along with Riku, who was being watched by Azora, a guy who was supposedly just a video game, but he also seemed to be inspired by Final Fantasy vs. 13, which was an unreleased game before it turned to Final Fantasy 15. As time goes on, the Azora stuff seemed to be more and more relevant after the DLC dropped. And then came Kingdom Hearts' Melody of Memory. They dropped the new concepts of Quadratum and Unreality, Riku departs for there, and then after that, it happened. Kingdom Hearts 4 was revealed, and the picture became that much bigger. Missing Link got revealed too, and Dark Road got its finale. I got the Xehanort backstory I wanted, and KH4, and maybe even the whole phase, while not going into Kingdom Hearts itself, seemed like it was going to be taking us to a whole new world that will change our understanding of what's even possible. Even the logo of the series changed, showing that this next game's approach may be different. Perhaps the story Namor wanted to tell couldn't happen in the current format, so he decided to change it. Not only that, but this story, I mean this new vision, is going to take place across a whole new phase, not just one finale game. Kingdom Hearts 3 didn't have what I wanted, but it might end up being a bridge into surpassing that one. I'd still like to see more of Xehanort and Sora interacting, and after Xehanort dropped that art of him and Shibuya, who really knows what could happen at this point? and that's exciting. I really don't know what's gonna happen in this phase. They might bring back Sora to the regular old Kingdom Hearts world, but what if they don't? I mean, what if that's not the end game here? I'm not gonna go crazy with theories. Anyone who watches me will know that I don't really even bother to make them that often. And when I do talk about it, I don't put too much stock into it being the truth or the real full picture. It's more of just a fun little discussion I do. I'm gonna keep my expectations in check, cause who knows? 
This could not go as far as I want still, but still, I will be excited for this Doom era of Kingdom Hearts. I don't know the full picture yet. Kingdom Hearts 3 could continue to be a fun, but overall disappointing release, or maybe it could end up being the best decision Nomura ever made. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time.